What's up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. These are my full card breakdown and predictions for UFC Fight Island 5. I am really looking forward to this card. So many good fights on this card. The main event is awesome. Corey Sanhagen, Marlon Marias. Uh, the co-main event, I like a lot. Edson Barbosa, Maquan, Americani. And then there's so many fun fights scattered out throughout the card. So many undefeated guys coming in here. I think there's like three or four guys that are undefeated coming in here. So really looking forward to uh, to the card as a whole and some of these lines are a little bit crazy and we'll talk about them and uh, I think there has potential to be a lot of underdogs to come out here and get some upsets so we're looking forward to this card it's going to be a really fun one um, coming off of last week it was actually a it was actually a good night I was not expecting the card to be all that great but it started off the night awesome with a Luigi Vandermini finish and I was on Luigi I just not did not want to pull the trigger too much question marks um, but I did go um, I guess you can say 2.5 out of 4 on my bets. I had uh, Luma Luke Mumi at minus 130. It was not even close. Got so much value at that minus 130 price. I had Nasser D. Imavov at plus 105. Still some decent value, but I wish I would have got it earlier in the week. Um, it did close as like a minus 120, minus 130 favorite. So got in kind of early. And then uh, the parlay I had was Casey Kenny and Charles Jordan. And that, of course, you know, Jordan went to a draw and... You know, honestly, I didn't agree with the draw call. I thought Jordan clearly won round two and clearly won round three. But, you know, it is what it is. He came in there overlooking Kulabau, and you can't do that. No matter um, how much better you are than the opponent, you can't go in there and overlook him. Um, he thought it was going to be an easy finish. It kind of reminded me of uh, Maria Agapova. She went in there overconfident, got dominated by Shannon Dobson, and luckily was able to get away with a draw. But Jordan did get really hurt in that first round. But I did think he pulled it off. And then I had another parlay. Uh, Phillips and Jordan inside the distance at like plus 190. Um, so if that would have hit, would have been a monster night. But regardless, it was a good night. Al almost two units, one on the night on a card that wasn't great um, for betting, really. And this card right here, UFC Fight Island 5, I think there's lots of betting opportunity, um, lots of underdogs as well. So really looking forward to it. And we're going to break it down right now. Before we get started, if you guys can leave a like, subscribe if you have not yet. Would really appreciate that a ton. Almost to 7,000 subscribers. I think I need like less than 100. So if you can hit the subscribe button, if you guys like my content, um, 7,000 would be sweet to get by the end of the week. So thank you guys for that. Thank you guys for all the support. It means a ton. So with that said, we're going to get into the card here. And we're going to start with the first fight of the night. And that is Tagir Ulumbekov versus Bruno Silva. And uh, just a reminder, uh, the live stream is going to be on Friday where I'll touch on all my bets. Uh, touch on you know some DraftKings, all that good stuff, and give my final thoughts for the weigh-ins. And the weigh-ins are going to be important for this card, especially. So some thoughts might change from right now up into you know when we see the weigh-ins for sure. And then uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers, and on Instagram is DFS by the numbers. I will be posting all my betting action uh, sometime Saturday in the afternoon. But getting back to this matchup, Tadir Ulambekov versus Bruna Silva. Uh, Ulambekov, we don't, I don't know his age, his age is not on Tapology. Oh, he's, he's, he says he's 30 years old here. So he is 30 years old, 5'7". Um, we do not know his reach. Oh, his reach is 66, year, 66 inches, yeah. So um, when I did this, when I did my model, the reach and age were on there. But they're on there now, so that's good. So 66-inch reach, so going to be the same inch uh, reach as Silva. He's 12-1 and 4-1 and and in his last five fights. Bruna Silva, 30 years old, 5'4", 66-inch reach, 10-5 and 2-3. and, two and three. In his last five fights. So um, I'll tell you guys right now, I do have Tagir in a parlay with somebody who we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, he's minus 400 right now, and Silva is plus 325. And I really can't disagree with that line. I think it'll honestly only get wider. I think people will start to add uh, Tagir into their parlays. And I really do like him to win this fight. I think he has the advantage everywhere on the feet. He looks pretty solid. Very, very good wrestling. And Silva is a black belt in BJJ. So we do. he does have to be kind of careful on the mat. But, you know, he looks definitely looks legit to me. I think he's going to throw way more volume than Silva. I think he can get him down whenever he wants. Um, very, very good wrestler. Just stay out of trouble on the mat. And outside of, you know, Silva throwing up uh, some type of submission or maybe landing a hard shot, I don't really see Tagir losing this fight. Uh, Tagir has lost once um, in a fight that he arguably won. Um, you know, he, so he didn't lose by decision in that fight. And then other than that, hasn't been finished. He is 12-1. Uh, and one. Silva has been finished once by strikes and once by submission. Um, I don't know if Tagir is going to, go, going to go out here and finish him, but I think he can get a pretty dominant decision here. I think he's the much better fighter. I think all the advantages are in his favor. So 
Give me to gear to win and give me to gear to win by decision. Up next, we have a very intriguing fight here, and that is Tracy Cortez versus Stephanie Ager. And Cortez is 26 years old, 5'5", 67 and a half inch reach, 7 and 1, and 5 and 0 in her last five fights. And uh, Stephanie Ager, she is 32 years old, 5'8", going to have a 3 inch height advantage. We do not know her reach, but I'm assuming she's going to have some type of reach advantage. She is 5 and 1 and 4 and 1 in her last five fights. Taking a look at the odds here, and we have uh, Tracy Cortez minus 200, and Egger is plus 170. So a lot of money is coming in on Egger, and honestly, rightfully so. This fight should be lined a lot closer, and I'll tell you why a little bit. So watching tape on Egger, she's not the best striker, uh, but really neither is Cortez. Cortez is very tough, but you know her striking is not all that, not all there. And what she wants to do is wrestle and get this fight to the mat most times. And I think that's playing right into Egger's game plan of getting it to the mat. Egger is legit on the mat for sure. She has really good takedowns as well. We have seen Tracy Cortez taken down multiple times. Uh, Tracy Cortez does tend to slow down in fights, and as does Edgar. But um, we've seen Cortez get very tired and, and lose some third rounds in her career. And I don't know. I, I kind of like the underdog in this spot. I'm kind of seeing what other people are seeing. Um, you know, a lot of money has come in on Egger the past couple days here, and I definitely get it because this fight is more than definitely probably going to touch the mat, whether it's Cortez getting a takedown or even Egger can probably get a takedown. Egger's going to be the, the bigger woman in there for sure, um, and we'll definitely see it weigh-ins, but I'm expecting her to look, you know, pretty much, you know, a decent amount bigger. Uh, Three-inch height advantage. Uh, we'll see the, we'll, uh, see the reach advantage in there as well. And um, Cortez on the mat. I'm just not all that impressed. I was really impressed with her wrestling, don't get me wrong, but on the mat, she was reversed like three times by Maria Agapova. Not a great sign there at all. Um, she was put in some very, very bad spots. I saw her almost get armbarred a, a decent amount of times, and Edgar looks legit on the mat. I know she hasn't fought the best competition in the world, but um, she definitely looks good on the mat, and I think that's where this fight's going to play out. And if you did think that the fight was going to play out on the feet and Tracy Cortez won't go for takedowns and you don't think that Egger gets her down and it plays on the feet, I still don't think Cortez is going to look like minus 220, minus 200 in the striking. I think the striking is fairly close, um, although I will give the slight advantage to Cortez, but I just don't think she's going to look minus 220, minus 200 here. I really don't. I think this should be closer to a pick em here. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to go with Stephanie Egger to get a decision win. And honestly, I don't think a submission is off the table as well. So give me Stephanie Ager to get it done uh, by submission here. Cortez has been submitted before. Um, but yeah, give me uh, Stephanie Ager to get it done. Very intrigued for that fight. Uh, a fight that's going to be pretty good here, and that is Omar Morales versus Giga Chikazi. Morales is 34 years old, 5'11", 74-inch reach. He is undefeated at 10-0, obviously 5-0 in his last five fights. Jacob Chikotsi, he is 32 years old, 6 foot, 74 inch reach, 10 and 2, and 5 and 0 in his last five fights as well. It's just the level of competition for, for Jacob Chikotsi is you know not all that impressive. I mean, he did fight uh, Jamal Emers, who I, I, I kind of like there, and I actually thought Emers you know, could have won that fight as well. But um, other than that, took on Erwin Rivera on short notice. He was a, a, like a whole weight class bigger than him, and I'm just not impressed with Giga Chikotsi. Like, a lot of people are really like this guy. And I'm honestly surprised at the line. Like, um, Morales is minus 145 and Chikotsi is plus 125. And I totally agree with the line. I just thought Chikotsi would be maybe a slight favorite because people love this guy. And I honestly, I don't get it. I mean, he's very, very low volume. Sure, he, he throws cool strikes, but he's just so low volume. Um, he only averages 3.3 significant strikes per minute. He slows down at fights. Um, in that third round, he gets tired. He looks awful in that third round. We saw it against Emmers. And I don't know. I'm just not I'm not high on the guy. I'm really not. So Morales is someone who's going to be more dangerous. He's going to be coming forward. He's going to land the harder shots. And he is a black belt in BJJ. If he can get this fight to the mat, um, I think he can you know, have a ton of success. It's just Willie. So far in the UFC, I think Morales has landed one takedown. I think he's one for one on his takedowns as well. Uh, Chikotsi has been submitted before. We've seen him taken down a, a decent amount of times, and that's kind of his weakness is, is that ground game. And Emers was able to take him down a couple times, but Chikotsi is improving that ground game. I just think if Morales gets him down, he can uh, he can you know do some good work on, on the mat. So if I was Morales, I would come in here with a takedown heavy game plan, but in all honestly, it, it's probably going to stay on the feet. 
And even then, you know, Morales is going to throw more volume. He's going to be pressing forward. He's going to not slow down in that third round like Giga. So I got to go Morales here. And I actually like that line a lot at minus 145. I have not bet it yet, but I'm going to wait for the, for the Giga money to keep coming in because uh, people love this guy. And I don't know why, but uh, I'm not one of those people. And I, I do, I am pretty high on Morales. I think he's a, a very good fighter. And I like, I think he has a lot of advantages in this fight as well. So give me Morales to win. I'm going to say by, I'm going to say by decision, just by doing more. I think he's for sure going to win that third round. I think round one could be close when, when Giga's fresh, but uh, give me Morales to win a decision there. Next, we have a really tough fight to call. And that is Tony Kelly versus Ali Alkazi. And Alkazi looked decent. In his last fight against Ern Rivera, um, you know, arguably won that fight. It was a very, very close fight. I don't, I didn't think he looked like a big underdog. I think he was a big underdog coming in there. I think he was like, like plus 180, plus 190, kind of where he's at right now. Um, but uh, Alakazi, he is 30 years old, 5'6", 68, 68 inch reach, 8 and 4 and 4 and 1 in his last five fights. Uh, Tony Kelly, he is 33 years old, 5'9", 70 inch reach, 6 and 2 and 3 and 2 in his last five fights. And uh, Kelly looked really good himself in, in his uh, UFC debut against Kai Kamaka. I think I was definitely in the minority of picking Tony Kelly, and people were really confident in Kai Kamaka, and he did get that win, but the fight was you know a lot closer than people expected. Kelly uh, lost that first round, but round two and round three were pretty close, and if he was able to stuff those takedowns, he probably would have won that fight. He just throws so much volume. In that fight, he landed 7.6 significant strikes per minute it's just the problem with kelly is that takedown defense we've seen it time and time again he gets taken down quite a bit and fairly easy his takedown defense is definitely questionable and just taking a look at the odds here tony kelly is minus 230 and um you know alkazi is plus 190 and i think that line is is way off due to the fact that you know alkazi has a very solid path to victory and that is takedowns i mean on the feet you got to favor Tony Kelly pretty much all day. He's going to throw a ton more volume, but uh, Alkazi does have very good takedowns, a very good submission game as well, and we've seen Kelly you know, struggle with those takedowns. So actually, I'm going to go with the underdog here, and I'm going to go with Alkazi to get the win. I'm going to pick my second underdog of the night. Um, I think he's going to win that first round. I just think if he does not tire out, if he does not slow down, and it's kind of it was kind of disappointing in the Irwin Rivera fight. I think he got a couple takedowns in that first round. He kind of shied away from those takedowns in round two and three. And even then, the fight was still very close. But, you know, if he wants to strike with Tony Kelly, he's going to lose. But if he comes in here with the game plan of getting those takedowns, getting some top control, I think he's going to win a close decision. And honestly, and you know, no matter who wins this fight, I don't think Tony Kelly is going to look minus 230. I really don't. Uh, so give me Ali Alkazi to win this fight by a pretty close decision. I think the line's off. And I'm going to take the underdog here to get it done. Next, we got a very good fight here, uh, Impa Kasagane versus Jaquin Buckley. And um, Kasagane is still very young, 26 years old, 5'11", 73-inch reach, 8-0, and 5-0 and and in his last five fights. Buckley, he is 26 years old, 5'10", 73-inch reach, 10-3, and 3-2 and and in his last five fights. Remember, Buckley came in, coming in on a very short notice against Kevin Holland. Gave a decent account of himself, did get dropped twice, got knocked out. Um... And, you know, I thought coming into this fight, I'd maybe take a look at Buckley. But just after the tape, like, I'm very impressed with Impa here. Um, you know, just watching him in his fight against Maki Patolo. And I know Maki Patolo is not, you know, the best fighter in the world. But just watching him, it doesn't look like someone who only has eight fights on his record. It looked like he's been in there for, you know, a lot longer than that. And I was just very impressed with, you know, how he was able to take shots, how how hard he was hitting um, Maki Patolo there. And I'm surprised... You know, he doesn't have an, I don't believe he has a knockout on his record. I think he has one win into the distance, and that's by uh, submission there. But, you know, he hits pretty hard, so I'm surprised that knockout has not came yet. And uh, maybe it comes here against Buckley, who has been knocked out twice. And in this fight, I mean, Impa's still a little green, but I, I think this is a good matchup for him. Buckley does tend to slow down. Um, I think, you know, having a little bit more time to prepare could help him a little bit, but this is a guy that puts everything into a shot so maybe he catches impa but if he doesn't impa is going to be throwing more volume i think impa has more pass to victory maybe using the takedown using his ground game um buckley can can definitely be taken down i've seen it um a decent amount that you know he can he can be taken down and controlled and um if impa wants to i do think he can, he can get those takedowns but you know very good fight here uh taking a look at the line 
and at the beginning of the week before any tape i saw minus 245 impa plus 205 buckley i thought that was way off i thought it should be a lot closer and maybe it still should be closer because buckley is very dangerous um buckley has fought the better competition but you know i don't know i think i'm uh i think i'm gonna go impa here and i think i'm gonna pick him by i'm gonna say he gets his first knockout i think i say he's gonna knock buckley out in that third round um impa has showed he has a great gas tank i think he's going to have the cardio advantage in this matchup Buckley has been knocked out twice, and um, give me Impa here to get that finish. Um, don't know if I'm going to bet it. I think that, you know, minus, what is it, minus, uh, what did I say, minus 225? Yeah, minus, minus 245. Yeah, I think it could be a little wide. Maybe it's a parlay piece. Um, maybe take a look at the the inside the distance line is probably decent for um, Impa there because I do think there's a solid chance he can get a late finish here. Uh, Buckley has only been to decision a couple times, so give me, yeah, give me Impa to win this fight. I'm gonna say by third round knockout, but honestly, wouldn't be surprised if it was a decision. But you know, I, I have a feeling he knocks out Buckley here, so Impa for me, and um, really looking forward to the fight. Really looking forward to see if Impa is really the real deal. A lot of people are really high on this guy. Next, we have a, a heavyweight fight here, and that is Rodrigo Nascimento versus Chris Dacus. And, um, you know, Nascimento is 27 years old. He has 6'2 with the 80-inch reach, going to have a 4-inch uh, reach advantage. He's 8-0 and, and obviously 5-0 and in his last five fights. Chris Dawkins, he is 31 years old, 6'3", 76-inch reach, 9-3 and three and 4-1 and one in his last five fights. And, um, you know, it's weird. Like, both these guys have made me some money. Um, Nascimento against Mays, he was like minus 120, which looking back on it is is insane and he was able to submit um Mays in that second round is able to get him down in that first round as well and this guy he's legit he hasn't he improved his striking a lot he was striking with Mays he looked very good he was throwing hard shots his cardio he's going to have the cardio advantage um and Doc is someone who made me money as well against uh Parker Porter he was actually an underdog he was an underdog and looking back on it is crazy so I, I did have uh Chris Dawkins winning that fight and uh, he went in there and got a nice knockout on uh, Parker Porter. But, uh, man, I really like this matchup for uh, Nascimento here. And I know a lot of people are on the, the Chris Daka side. And I really don't get it whatsoever. I think if he does not get this done in the first round, he's just going to crumple over. His cardio is very bad. I've seen him leave the first round a couple times. And it is not um, great whatsoever. I've seen him submitted before in the second round. Um, and he is a, a BJJ black belt. I just found that out recently. And honestly, when I found that out, like I, I couldn't have, I couldn't have told you he was a black belt by any by any tape. Like it does not look like um, he's a black belt. And I've not seen much of his ground game. I've seen him submitted, but um, I guess he's a black belt. Um, and Nascimento, you can tell this dude is a black belt. Like he's going out here and submitting guys fairly easy. Um, he's able to, you know, improve his position really good. Able to get a bunch of advances advances. And just looking at his stats here. 100% finish rate for Nascimento. 75% of his wins come by submission. So I, I'm going to favor the grappling of Nascimento all day. And I really, you know, I don't care if Dawkins is a, is a black belt because really Nascimento is a legit black belt, like legit. And his striking is legit. And take a look at the line here. And money's actually coming in on, on Chris Dawkins. So I'm going to wait a little bit. Uh, I'm going to wait for people to keep betting on Dawkins. Maybe get a, get a decent line on Nascimento because I really like this guy. So. I'm going to take Nascimento to win by, I'm going to say second round submission. I think that it could be kind of a, maybe a, maybe a boring-ish first round. Um, but I don't know. Nascimento has very good takedowns. Um, if Chris Dawkins really is a black belt, man, um, it could be very interesting if this does hit the map. But I do think Nascimento is going to submit him in that second round. Um, I think Dawkins is going to be very dangerous in that first. So Nascimento does have to be kind of cautious. If you are on the Dawkins side, I'd probably just bet him in the first round. I think it's like plus 500. I think that's his only path to victory is in that first round. I don't think he has the cardio um, to get into that second. And I know for sure that Nascimento has cardio going into the second round, into the third round. But um, give me Nascimento to win this by second round submission. Fairly confident in that pick. Um, the line is going to come down a little bit, so I'd wait if you do want to place a bet on him. And if you are, are on Dawkins, like I said, probably the first round at plus 500 would be the best, but uh, not Cemento all day here. Next, we have a, a, a an interesting fight here, and that's Tom Breeze versus KB Bowler. And uh, Bowler is 28 years old, 6'4", don't know his reach, 8-0, and, and he is obviously 5-0 in his last five fights, another undefeated guy here. 
Tom Breeze, he is 29 years old, 6'3", 73 and a half inch reach. 11 and 2 and 3 and 2 in his last five fights. We all know the deal with Tom Breeze. Very, very hard to trust a guy. And, you know, you see him at a line um, of minus 260. So money is continuing to come in on him. Uh, he opened up at minus 215. So a lot of people are betting him. I wouldn't recommend that, but I do think he's the rightful favorite. I do think he's the better fighter. And honestly, there wasn't much tape on Bueller whatsoever. I was able to only watch like two or three fights. And from what I've seen, he has decent power. His ground game is decent, but Breeze is obviously going to have the uh, the ground game advantage here. If Breeze is able to take him down, I think he can probably get a finish here, uh, maybe by submission. I just think Breeze is the more tested fighter, and although you can't trust him, I do like him a lot in this fight. Breeze has finished 64% of his wins by submission. He's a BJJ black belt, I believe, and I think if he is able to get down Bueller, he'll have a big advantage on the feet. Um... You know, wouldn't really mess around with Bueller too much on the feet. He looks pretty dangerous. So if I was Tom Breeze, I'd probably go for um, some takedowns. But even on the feet, like, uh, I do think Breeze is going to be better on the feet as well. And Breeze isn't somebody that typically goes for these takedowns. But, you know, in this fight, uh, he'd have a pretty big advantage. But even on the feet, I'd still probably favor Breeze here. I think he's probably the better striker. He is dangerous on the feet himself. 27% of his wins by submission. Um, like I said, 91% finish rate. So this fight's probably going to end inside the distance. Breeze has been knocked out once in his 13 fights. He's never been submitted. And that one knockout was by Brendan Allen, somebody I'm very high on. So can't look into that fight too much because Allen is a beast. And uh, Breeze just didn't bring it that day. So if Breeze shows up, there's no doubt in my mind he should win this fight. It's just uh, which Tom Breeze is going to show up is something we always have to worry about. But I'm going to take Tom Breeze to win. I'm going to say by like a second round submission. All right, getting into the next fight, Yusuf Salau versus Alil Topora. Uh, Topora is 23 years old, 5'7", uh, don't know his reach, 8-0, obviously 5-0 in his last five fights. Salau is 24 years old, 5'10", 75-inch reach, 10-2, and 4-1 and and in his last five fights. And Topora is, you know, a solid fighter. Like, watching tape on him, very, very impressed. The thing is about him, he's dangerous. He is very dangerous. He hits hard. A very good submission game. Very good takedowns. And, you know, taking a look at the line here, minus 185. So they're giving Zalau some respect. Uh, Tapora plus 160 here. I don't know. I like Tapora in this matchup, believe it or not. I, Zalau is someone who has made me a decent amount of money over his past couple fights. I believe he's like 3-0 and in the UFC. Um, in his last fight against Barrett, he had so many opportunities to get the finish there, um, was not able to get that finish, and then he beat Jordan Griffin, um, and then also beat, I believe, Austin Lingo as well. So some decent wins there. It's just Torpia is going, Topora is going to bring the fight. He's the more dangerous guy. I don't think he's ever been to decision. Nope, 88% of his fights have been won by knockout, 12% by submission. So he is very, very dangerous. He hits hard. And Zalau can be taken down. We saw Zalau taken down by uh, Jordan Griffin a couple times. Uh, Zalau does have a 72% takedown defense, but but uh, Tapora is going to come out here and he's going to get these takedowns, I believe. And I don't know. I'm kind of worried about Tapora's cardio because we have not seen him, you know, go into late fights all that often at all. I think he's been into the second round maybe like one time. Um, so that's kind of concern there. And, you know, Zalau is going to have the cardio. But if his cardio holds up, or maybe this doesn't even get to the second round, Tapora is very, very dangerous. And I'm just going to go with Tapora here. I'm going to take a shot on the underdog. I believe it's like my third or fourth underdog pick of the night. And like I said at the beginning of the video, there's going to be a decent amount of underdogs on this card. And uh, give me Tapora to win here, probably inside the distance. Um, you know, Zalau's never been finished, but there is a first for everything. Um, Zalau's not much of a finisher himself. I mean, he was before the UFC, but he's not been able to finish. Guys like Jordan Griffin, um, Peter Barrett is somebody he most definitely should have finished. Um, but I really like what I see from Tapora. So give me Tapora here. Have not bet it yet. Maybe wait until the end of the week because I do think a lot of love's going to come in on Zalau. Uh, Zalau's another guy that a lot of people like, including me. I'm a big Zalau fan. He has won me a lot of money. I've been on him every single fight so far in the UFC. I'm 3 0 with Zalau. But I'm going to go against him here. I'm going to go with Tapora. So. Tapora by, give me a first round submission here for Tapora. All right, and then getting into the next fight. Somebody else that has won me some good money his last fight, and that was uh, Tom Aspinall against, um, what's his name? I'm gonna I'm really going to forget his name. The dude that came in uh, with his shirt on and, and weighed in, and uh, kind of went all in on, on Tom Aspinall, had him in a parlay, had him inside the distance. Um, forget the dude's name, though, but... 
Um, it'll come to me by the probably by the end of this breakdown. But Tom Aspinall versus Allen. Um, I believe it's pronounced like Badot or Badot or something like that. Badot, Badot, something like that. So Aspinall is 27 years old. He has 6'5", 78 inch reach, eight and one, four and one in his last five fights. Allen Badot. Um, a lot of his last names this week are very hard to pronounce. So um, bear with me there. He is 6'4". Um, he is coming up a weight class, I believe, from light heavyweight. So he's going to be the much smaller fighter in there. Although he is 6'4". Uh, he has eight and one and four and one in his last five fights. And uh, Aspinall is definitely the real deal. Uh, Jake Collier is the is the name. So he was able to knock out Jake Collier in the first, well, it was like the first minute. And, you know, I was very, very high on Aspinall. And it, was, it was more so a fade on, um, on Collier. And even though, like, Aspinall, you know, he looked good in that fight and he's looked good in the past. Um, he's a he's a finisher for sure. He's finished 100% of his fights, 75% by knockout, 25% by submission. I guess he's a, a BJJ black belt as well. He has been submitted before though a couple years ago. Um, and Alan Badut, um, just not all that impressed on the of the guy. If Aspinall comes in here and maybe gets takedowns, I think he can easily get a submission here. It's just I don't know if he's going to come in here with a wrestling heavy game plan, but if he does, the submission is definitely on the table, and I think it's like plus uh, 925. So, something to think about there, and we'll take a look at the line here, if I can find it. Uh, Aspinall is minus 495, and uh, Alan Badut, he is 395. So, yeah, almost a minus 500 favorite, and I guess rightfully slow, so, but Alan could maybe land a hard shot, knock Aspinall out, but other than that, Aspinall should roll here, and I'm going to say he gets a... I'm going to say first round knockout, but if he comes in here with the wrestling heavy game plan, he can for sure get a submission, but I'm going to take the safe route and go by knockout for Aspinall in the in the first round there. Really good fight here. Uh, Driscus Duplesis versus Marcus Perez. Another tough name to pronounce there, but uh, Duplesis, he is 26 years old, 6 foot, 76 inch reach, 14 and 2 and 4 and 1 in his last five fights. Uh, Marcus Perez, he is 30 years old, 6 1, 73 and a half inch reach, 12 and 3. And two and three in his last five fights, and just another really hard fight to call here. Um, and you know, I was kind of surprised with the line. Um, I believe that Perez isn't. Yeah, Perez is an underdog at plus one thirty-five, and Duplessis is minus one fifty-five. Watching tape on Duplessis, I mean, he's legit. He he is legit. So I can kind of see why he's the favorite. But you know, UFC experience. He has fought decent guys. A very good submission game. But you know, Perez has a very good submission game himself. Um, decent power for Duplessis. Uh, he can be taken down, though. I've seen him taken down a lot of times. I even saw him get submitted, I think, a year ago as well. Uh, so if Perez is able to get him down, Perez is for sure alive on the feet. It's just Perez doesn't throw much. But the thing about Perez, and the thing I like about Perez in this fight, is, you know, say what you want about him, but the dude is very tough. He has never been finished, um, not by submission, not by strikes. He can definitely take a punch, and I think he's going to need that durability in this fight because... Duplessis in 16 fights, he's never saw the scorecards. He's won 100% of his wins all by finish, 64% by submission, 36% by knockout. I um, mean, he has been knocked out once, and he has been submitted once as well. And I'm going to take another shot on the underdog on Marcus Perez. I think the line could honestly be a little bit closer. Perez is, you know, the veteran coming in here with uh, multiple UFC fight experience. Um, someone who has beat, you know, guys like Ian Heinish. Um, I know he looked bad in his last fight, but man... If he comes in here and he gets the fight to the mat, I know he doesn't have the best wrestling, but I have seen Duplessis taken down more than once, actually a decent amount of times. Uh, Prez does average about a takedown per 15 minutes, 26% accuracy, and I just think he'll have a, a pretty decent advantage on the mat. Just when he goes for those takedowns, he has to watch his neck because Duplessis has a very, very, very good uh, submission game there. So I'm going to take the slight dog on Prez. I think someone's getting finished in this fight for sure. Um, it's just I'm going to go with the guy that's more durable and Marcus Perez here to get it done inside the distance. Uh, I'm going to say maybe a second round submission here. So Marcus Perez for me taking another dog there. All right, and then we are getting close to the end here. And we're going with Ben Rothwell versus Marcin Tybura. Not the most exciting fight in the world, but you know, two guys that are going to go in here and they're going to throw bombs, especially Ben Rothwell. He hits very, very hard. 
Um, Tybura isn't much of a, a finisher. He's more of a, believe it or not, he's more of a submission guy. He has 37% of his wins by submission. He has a black belt in BJJ. He's not going to go out here and submit Rothwell more than likely. I mean, he does, and uh, Tybura does have a 32% uh, knockout rate. Rothwell has finished 90% of his fights, and, and you know I think that's something important to note here. Probably going to be a very low output fight. Both guys, you know, average just around 3.3 significant strikes per minute. It's just the durability for Rothwell is what is leading me to pick him in this fight. And um, I believe I didn't go over it, but Rothwell, he is 38 years old, so he is getting up there in age. I think he is towards the end of his career. He is 6'4", going to have a one-inch height advantage, a two-inch reach advantage at 80 inches, and then 38 and 12 and two and three in his last five fights. So 50 fights in his career compared to Tybura is 19 and 6 and has 25 fights. Tybura is the younger four fighter at 34 years old. He is 6'3", and he is 3-2 and two in his last five fights. And I'm going to go with the, the more durable fighter here. Um, Tybura has been knocked out like four times. His chin is very questionable, and I think that's honestly a recipe for disaster against someone like Ben Rothwell, who's going to come forward, pressure him up against the cage, and, and land some bombs there. So although Rothwell is towards the end of his career, I'm still going to pick him in this matchup. Uh, Rothwell has been finished four times himself, but in double the fight. So give me Rothwell to win. I'm gonna say by I'm gonna say by first round knockout for Rothwell. And you know this does have potential of being a very ugly heavyweight fight, like the the last week's heavyweight fight as the co-main event. But um, I do see Rothwell getting it done inside the distance. All right, and next we are at the co-main event and a very good one, and it is Edson Barbosa versus Macwan Amirakani. Uh, Amir Khan is someone who made me some money last time he fought against uh, Danny Henry. He was able to go in there and get a very quick submission, which was awesome to see. But I just don't think he's going to be able to do that against Edson Barbosa here. Barbosa is 34 years old. He is 5'11", with a 75-inch reach, 20-9, and and 1-4 and in his last five fights. Obviously, a lot of that is against great competition and a fight that he arguably won against Dan Ige. Uh, Makwan Amir Khan, he's 31 years old, 5'10", 72-inch reach, going to be at a 3-inch reach disadvantage. He's 16 and four, and he is three and two in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds here. Um, Barbosa is minus 260, and Macwan Marcani is plus 220. Didn't touch on the the Rothwell Tibera, but Rothwell is minus 160, and Tibera is plus 140. So a lot of money is coming in on that on the Tibera side. If the line gets any closer, might take a shot on Rothwell. But back to the Barbosa fight here. Um, this is actually the other leg to my parlay. I have a Barbosa parlayed with Tagir Ulanbekov. I really like that parlay. I, I just think it's a great stylistic matchup for Barbosa here. And I know Barbosa has like a 75% takedown defense, but that's against some very, very elite guys. I don't know if Amara Khani has the wrestling to do that. And if Amara Khani is not able to get those takedowns early, he doesn't have the gas tank to go into the later rounds. And, you know, getting his takedown stuffed is only going to hurt his cardio going forward in the fight. And Barbosa is going to probably be the fresher fighter as the fight goes on. And when it's staying standing, which I think this fight's going to be standing maybe 90, 95% of the time, unless Armar Khan is able to get Barbosa down, but we'll talk about it. Even if he does get Barbosa down, I think Barbosa can get back up. And a lot of people think that if Armar Khan gets Barbosa down, the fight's going to be over shortly after. Like Barbosa is a, uh, a BJJ black belt himself. He's fairly decent on the mat. I do think he can hold his own. Um, but but uh, I'm going to go with Barbosa here to get probably a knockout. I'm going to say he survives that early storm of Amara Khan. He's able to stuff those takedowns. Amara Khan, he definitely slows down it later in the fight. I'm going to say Barbosa lands a, a hard shot and puts out, puts him out there. So give me Barbosa to win here. I'm going to say third round knockout for Barbosa. And I'm fairly confident in that pick as well. And now it is time for the main event. Very, very good fight here. And it's a fight that I was struggling on a little bit, but I, I do know who I want to pick in this fight. And Corey Sanhagen, he is 28 years old. He is 5'11 with a 70-inch reach, going to have about a 3.5-inch reach advantage. He is 12-2 and 4-1 and and in his last five fights. Um, Marlon Marias, he is 32 years old, 5'6", 66.5-inch reach, 26-6-1, and 4-1 and and in his last five fights. Take a look at the line here. You know, Sanhagen is minus 130, and Marias is plus 110. Sanhagen opened up minus 140. He dropped down to like minus 170, and then the line is coming back. A lot of people are starting to put some money on Marias, and I can understand why. But I think if Marias wins, it's going to be very, very early in the fight. Marias is very, very dangerous in those first couple rounds, and then he does tend to slow down. In the Cejudo fight, he looked fantastic. He looked probably the best he ever had in that first round. 
and then ended up slowing down, got finished by Sahuda, I believe, in the second round. Um, so he doesn't really have the cardio to go into the later rounds here. He definitely slows down, and, you know, it being a five-round fight, you got to favor Corey Sanhagen in this fight. Corey Sanhagen is someone who's going to throw a ton of volume. He lands, you know, double the volume of Marias at just about seven significant strikes per minute compared to Marias' 3.5. Um, you know, Sanhagen did get submitted his last fight against uh, Sterling there. Um, and Marias, I don't think he's going to come in here with a wrestling-heavy game plan. If he does that and he's not successful, he's definitely going to gas himself out. So I think Marias is probably going to take an approach of maybe taking the first round, round and a half, to kind of slow it down a little bit. Um, I think at least that would be smart because if he does not get that early finish and he comes out here trying to take off Stan Hagen's head, he's most definitely going to slow down, maybe gas himself out. But if he comes in here with a kind of a, a better game plan of you know taking his time, which maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Um, but even then, like... As long as Sanhagen doesn't get knocked out here, I don't really see how he's going to lose this fight. He's going to have a decent height and reach advantage. He's going to use that range, that length very well. He's able to switch stances, um, which is going to help him a ton in this fight against someone who has very good kicks in Marlon Marias. And uh, I like Sanhagen a lot. And I'm going to wait until this line gets a little closer because the line right now, minus 130, I like it. But I'm going to be a little bit greedy because I, I think a lot more money is going to come in on Marias, maybe we can get Sanhagen at minus 115, minus 120. Um, I don't see the line getting really wider than minus 135, minus 140. Uh, maybe it does, but I do see a lot of love for Marias, and rightfully so. But if I was to bet Marias, I'd probably bet him um, either inside the distance, maybe round one, round two props. I don't see him winning a decision. I I don't think that's uh I don't think that's likely at all. But Sanhagen, I can see him winning a decision. I can see him getting a late stoppage if Marias does slow down. And ultimately, I'm going to go with Stan Hagen here to get a fourth or fifth round knockout. I just think he's going to survive the early storm of Marias. He's going to tire out Marias. Uh, Stan Hagen has elite cardio. We don't have to worry about his cardio issues. He has none. Uh, Marias definitely has the cardio issues here in this fight. And outside of some type of knockout, I think Stan Hagen gets it done You know, fairly, fairly convincingly here. So give me Corey Stan Hagen to win by fourth or fifth round finish. And uh, that might be a potential bet for me. I'm just going to wait in a little bit, waiting for the later in the week to see how the line kind of plays out. But I really like Sanhagen in this fight to bounce back from that um, from that Sterling early submission there. All right, guys, that's about it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Subscribe if you are not subscribed yet. Like I said, 7,000 subscribers by the end of the week would be absolutely fantastic. So it would really help out a lot. Thank you for all that already support me. It means a ton. Uh, make sure you guys tune into the Friday live stream, 7 p.m. Eastern time, going over the weigh-ins, final thoughts, some betting, all that good stuff. And uh, weigh-ins are very important. I want to see some of these guys on the scales. Some of these guys, um, you know, some of the heavyweights is going to be interesting to see them on the scales. Other guys like Tony Kelly's dropping a weight class. Um, it's going to be interesting to see him on the scales. Other guys changing up weight classes. Uh, um, who else is, is, is changing up a weight class here? Let's see. Omar Morales is, I believe, is coming down to weight class as well. So, yeah, really looking forward to those weigh-ins. With that said, going to be posting my bets on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers, or on Instagram, DFS by the numbers. My bets are always free. But if you want to support me more, um, you can sign up on my Patreon. I do have a betting package that you know I give out all my bets right when I place them in a short video breaking down why I placed each bet and also my model that has all the stats for each fighter for every fight. Um, and that, with that said, that's about it. And if you guys have any bets, good luck. And let's win some money on UFC Fight Island 5.